Today's um, lesson is called beauty. Is it better to be beautiful on the outside or on the inside? It depends on how one defines beauty. The dictionary defines beauty as the quality attributed to whatever pleases the senses or mind, as by line, color, form, tone, behavior, and etc. It is also defined as a thing having this quality, also defined as good looks. Then it goes on to say a very good looking woman. Last of all, any very attractive feature such as best, nicest, and etc. No wonder people have such distorted images in their mind concerning beauty. It is all very confusing, isn't it? In the 60's the first Barbie doll was made. Women thought they had to live up to the image of the Barbie doll as well as the image of Marilyn Monroe. Then came out the gaunt, thin, nearly starved runway models like Twiggy. Then now we have celebrity women like Jennifer Aniston, Eva Longoria, Demi Moore and the likes. All over magazine ads and TV commercials women are singled out for beauty products and weight loss drugs. With all the confusion, do we really know what beauty is? Have we ever asked God about beauty? Or instead, are we relying on public opinion? Is public opinion striving to become reality? Perhaps to some, it already has. When I was a teenager, I thought I had an ugly outward appearance. I was very insecure during those times. I decided to take matters into my own hands. I tried various methods including diet pills, starvation, weight loss shakes. If you can name it, I have probably tried it. Outward beauty can be a path that leads to self-destruction. The first woman ever designed, Eve. Genesis chapter 2 verses 22 through 24. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. But so like beauty was created in perfect perfectness, it can also turn corrupted. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Once this happened, sin entered our world. Satan used Eve as a vessel to introduce sin into our world. Book of John chapter 8 verse 44. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So through the years, Satan has demonstrated the importance of self exaltation through various movies, magazines, and TV ads. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Some people may believe that Satan is a mere figment of the imagination. Some believe he is a man in a red suit with horns on top of his head living under the earth in a bottomless pit. Book of Job chapter 1 verse 7 And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Satan is very real, and he is nipping at our heels. He enters our thoughts and distorts our views. Book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 8 All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 10. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Book of Isaiah chapter 2 verse 11. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of man shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Isaiah ch chapter 4 verse 24 And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink and instead of a girdle a rent and instead of well said hair baldness and instead of a stomacher a girdling of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. So all that we work so hard for and toil in vain for will vanish. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with these that shall come after. Basically, as far as outward beauty goes, it prevails to nothing. Inward beauty is best demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ. His ministry gives us hope and redemption for our sins. The word beatitude, according to Webster's Dictionary, means perfect blessedness or happiness. To me, this word means beautiful attitudes. How can we have beautiful attitudes? We need to die daily, as the Apostle Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. We also need to be aware of outer beauty versus inward beauty. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 53 and 54. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. The Beatitudes are a reassurance of the promises of God. They also serve as a guide of what inward beauty should look like and the benefits of it. These can be found in Matthew chapter 5 verses 3 through 12. Matthew chapter 6 verses 22 and 23. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single... Thy whole body shall be full of light, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Matthew 6 verses 28 through 30. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Do we invest too much time and effort in our beauty? People have heard the saying, clothes make the man. I think we have our priorities in the wrong order. Clothes do not make the man, but man simply makes the clothes. If I wanted to get better clothes, for instance, I could go to the free store. Someone could give me hand-me-downs. It's not a huge priority on my list. <laughs> Why waste so much money on worldly things? Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 through 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew chapter 16 verses 26.
For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 5 Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Is your outer garment filthy? Would you like to exchange it? Revelations 3 verse 5 He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. How much is this white, white raiment worth to you? It is your choice. Inward beauty, that is a reflection of Christ, or outward beauty, which is a reflection of the traditions of men. I pray that you choose wisely. Dear Heavenly Father who art in heaven, we come to you today to help people make a choice. Help them choose the side of good over the side of evil. Help them to change their lives for the better. There are people out there that are struggling. They're still trying to make a decision in which side to be on. You showed me, Lord, that I shouldn't be on a losing team, but a winning team. A team that has been proven to have victory. And when you read the end of the book, you know the end. It's a happy end, for you wrote the end. You're not an author of confusion, but an author of great understanding and of great patience for his people. Please, Jesus, help those who need it most. That includes me, even. Help those who need your help so much. Those who maybe don't realize that they're loved as much as they are through you, Lord. For your love is unconditional and gracious, Father. I praise you for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.